close your eyes and watch your breath. Notice when it's coming in, notice when it's going out. And try to stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. This way you train the mind to stay with something for long periods of time so you can watch it. Otherwise the mind is going to jump around. Looks here for a bit, looks there for a bit, and never really knows anything because it doesn't stay with anything continuously. So here's an exercise in getting the mind to stay right here. Allow the breath to be comfortable. Don't force it too much. But just ask yourself, what kind of breathing would feel good right now? Short breathing, long breathing? Or in short, out long, in long, out short, deep or shallow. Experiment to see what feels best right now. That way you're not just forcing the mind to stay here, you're giving it something to explore in the present moment, something to learn about. Because the way you breathe does have an impact on the way you experience your body. And because of that, it makes sense to pay careful attention to how you breathe so that you can have a comfortable sense of the body, to feel at ease here in the present moment. This is where you give the mind a good foundation. When the mind has a foundation, then it can look at its life, like we do every year at this time of year. The new year comes around and we think, well, what are we going to do this year that's better than last year, that's special? And you want to make sure that you're coming from a good place when you make up your mind what you really want out of life. Do you want to just gain things or do you want to develop good qualities in the mind? The things you can gain outside are not going to stay with you for long, but the qualities of mind can stay with you if you develop them properly. And that's a much more worthwhile belonging, a much more worthwhile treasure. So think about that. What would you like to develop this year in terms of your thoughts, your words, your deeds, in terms of your virtue, in terms of your powers of concentration, in terms of your discernment, the attitudes you have to other people, the goodwill you have for others, other people out there that you would like to see suffer? Maybe you can change your attitude toward that person. That way your actions become more reliable. There are lots of ways you can look at your, your life. Is, is anger a problem? Well, maybe that's something you should deal with this year. Don't just let it keep on festering, because it doesn't get easier as you get old. You know, as you notice, the older people get, the more difficult it is for them to change their ways. So change the ways for now while you can. Anything you know is an unskillful habit in the mind. You might say, well, this is the time to take it on. At least chip away at it so it's not quite so powerful, not quite so overwhelming in the mind. That way this new year we have is going to be a useful convention. It, you know, there's nothing on the sun on the morning of January 1st that said this is the new year. And you go to other cultures and they have other new years. In Thailand they have four new years. And in addition to January 1st they have the Chinese New Year, then they have the traditional Thai New Year, and then there's the Indian New Year. They take on all four. So it's just a convention that we start the year at some point in the cycle. But get some use out of that convention. It's a good time to stop and look at your habits, what needs to be changed. And what can you do to change it in a positive direction? So take some time to think about that. When they have New Year's resolutions, make sure yours is a resolution that focuses inside developing qualities of the mind. Those are the most useful resolutions of all. <laughs>